Hey Dreamers and welcome back to a new video. Today I'll explain and show to you guys how to create a film concept art using Dreams. And even if you aren't exactly interested in making concept art, you will still learn about how to create a scene, a world, valuable lessons about art, sculpting, lighting and atmosphere, composition and more. This is a high quality masterclass on how to bring a scene to life from scratch. For making this, I followed a professional six hours course about making film concept art with drawing and photo bashing. And I thought it would make an incredible video if I turned this into a dreams masterclass, but still use the advantages and tips that I got from the course. Here I quickly want to thank and introduce you to Wingfox who sponsored this video and gifted me this tutorial. Wingfox is a leading platform for artists. Not only will you learn useful skills, you will also gain a better insight of the industry and learn from professionals. There is a wide range of courses and masterclasses for pretty much everything about the art. You can learn 3D or CGI with different software drawing, illustrating and more. This is for beginners just as much as more advanced artists so feel free to check out if there is something interesting for you. You can use the affiliate link in the description down below. With that you would even support me a little bit and you can now also get the chorus that I followed for just $5 with my code saku 5 The link to that is in the description as well. Now, when creating anything, the very first step would actually be to gather inspiration and reference pictures, which I also use a lot for my work. However, here I obviously followed this course, so we kind of skip this step in this video. In the background, you can see the original artwork and final result of the course, and I obviously made my very own version out of it, which is always what you should do when using references. Give it your own touch, shapes, and give it your own vision instead of just copying it. Once we have our references, it's finally time to start creating and really dive in. I'm super happy to present you this. I've been working so much on this video every day for the last two weeks, and I think it turned out to be one of the best videos that I ever made. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Sorry for the long intro, but now, without further ado, let's create some art. In the beginning, we first want to block out our scene in simple shapes, not putting in too much effort yet. With this, we get a feeling where everything within the scene is gonna be, the scale and also a little bit about the atmosphere and color. In 2D, this would be drawing and rough sketches, set up a perspective grid, and there we obviously have the very first huge advantage of 3D, perspective. But compared to other 3D software, with Dreams we have another huge advantage because we can create everything in real time. We can instantly apply colors and textures and build that into our creative workflow. And also Dreams is just a lot faster and more artistic. For the temple asset specifically, even in the block out stage, I go for more complex shapes from the beginning, since this will allow me to work more effectively on it later instead of having to completely redo it. A lot of you probably have seen me more on landscape environments rather than architecture, but I really enjoy doing architecture and man-made structure as well. And the way that I found works incredibly well is to work a lot with hard blend. With hard blend we can create such complex shapes out of simple shapes that just seem to be made for architecture. What I can also recommend you is to work with the mirror and kaleidoscope tool. The mirror will obviously help you a lot to create symmetrical shapes. When working on architecture I typically have the grid tool activated and I know it can be really annoying and not working the way we want it sometimes. There, it can also really help to switch to the precise movement tool sometimes. I also work and try around a lot with the stretch tool once the shape is placed. 
during this process I also did experiment quite a bit which is always valuable to learn more and get faster and develop techniques further as well. Here you can see me use a cube that I'm just stretching down a little more and it creates this very good looking shape at the top. Also here for the stairs, the grid wouldn't have worked out that well, so I just switched to the precise movement and then make cuts later. I then created a very basic rock formation asset that I would use to block out the whole cave which was essential to also set up a basic atmosphere as well as the scale and depth of the scene. I also used some of my elements to create block out houses that I would use as placeholders for later. Now here's a look at the basic lighting and atmosphere that I set up as well as my finished block out of the scene. We let the source of light come from the hole in this cave which also helps to draw the attention of the eye onto the temple that is our main focus point. With elements that have more contrast in the foreground close to the camera and lighter elements in the distance we also support the sense of scale as well as colors and values but more about that later. Now we come to the next step, acid refinement. In this step we will add all the details and textures to our assets. While creating the scene I already developed a vision of what assets I really need at the end that I can also use effectively and reuse in different ways. In this part of the video you will see me use a lot of different techniques to add details to the structures. I'll mostly let you enjoy the process of this while also explaining some things. For texturing I decided to go with a style where I would outline the edges of the structures with a lighter color as well as adding some scratches. I do that by drawing over it with the curve tool and surface snap activated in the smear mode. I absolutely love Asian architecture, especially their roofs and how they're a bit rounded up, but that also means they have quite a complex shape that is not too easy to create. To work on all four sides of the ceiling, I activated the mirror and kaleidoscope tool and started by rounding it up with a cylinder. I also created the main structure as well as the bricks with cloning cylinders in a row. For the bricks specifically, I used the cylinder, stretched and cut it in half that you can all choose as an option in tweak menu while holding it. Now this might be one of my favorite parts in the video. You'll remember how I said that you should bring in your own vision and really make it your own. So I thought since this is an ancient mysterious village hidden within a cave that might have had their own civilization. It would be really cool to give them their own kind of god or goddess in form of a statue. So I wanted to create one and I didn't have any references or inspiration for it. I, it just kind of came naturally, shape after shape in the flow of creating. And I really love these moments so much within dreams. It's one of the best feelings for me personally. I think the outcome is really cool and actually almost could be out of journey or similar games that I love and 
that's really interesting because when you think about it, it might have even had inspiration like that just subconsciously. In general, I can just recommend you to think of a story that your art tells as well. I then also added more detail to the elements in the foreground, but not as much. By creating the most detail with the temple and keeping some other things a bit more loose, we also support that focus point of the image. It's also nice to have a path in the picture that we can follow so we can imagine where we come from and where we go to. This is what the bridge is for as well. Here you see me adjusting the colors in the tweak menu to really make it one unit. I also recommend you to try different colors here. Next, I started detailing the ground asset that I would also turn into a multifunctional one that I can use as rocks for the whole cave. The hexagon shape was very useful to create some complex and good looking rock formations as you can see here. I added more scratches and details with the curve tool and later on textured the whole asset with my realistic texture technique. I'll link the tutorial for that in the info box on the top for you guys. Here's a bit of real-time footage of the final asset and how I laid it out. I then also decided to make one more complex pillar slash statue and here you can really see how powerful and awesome the kaleidoscope is. Definitely play around with that when doing architecture for some really cool shapes. Lastly, I created some stone formations that I thought could very much be graves. In the composition part, I also created almost a graveyard kind of place with them. And I also carved in some glyphs in there. Now that we have our polished assets, it's time to start placing them and really finally create the scene with them. This process is a lot of experimenting, switching back to the camera to see how it looks. And during this process, I also still adjust finishes and color a little bit. You can then also see how I use the created assets to combine them for variation in the man-made structures and houses.
One of the coolest ideas I had for this, I think, is to scale two of the statues quite big up in the background. Here's also a quick look at how this process looks in real time. With the atmosphere and lighting, we can completely change the looks of a scene and it's also one of the most fun things to do for me personally. Here you can see me set up some fog for the distance of the scene. This really helps to create some depth and also again supports our focus point. In general the fog of war, how we call it, is also an indicator for the end of a level and it helps a lot for levels in dreams especially as well. I'm now also giving you a quick look at the spotlights that I used I have one microchip for all the spotlights supporting the temple and foreground area and here I built on the images option a lot to create and support the texture further and just light up specific areas a bit more that would otherwise be too dark. In the other microchip I have all the spotlights for my main light source and the bounce lighting that results out of that. They are ordered in a way the scene is built so I have an overview which one to edit and I created a bounce light by using soft spotlights around the walls of the cave so these places aren't completely dark. In that way we can also create a very realistic feeling to the lighting. With this little showcase, I showed you how I added my color correction to the scene. The Great and Effect Sketcher tool is insanely powerful and can make a big change to your scene. I usually set up two or three of these gadgets, going for a colder color and warmer color versions, as well as low and high contrast. In this scene, I also went for high bloom, which supports the light. I highly recommend you to just try around and experiment with the different options for your own scene since it will always be different from scene to scene and it's also just a lot of fun to do. Now I would like to introduce you to a little trick that we use in drawing and illustrating a lot to get the values right. What I mean with that is the highlights and shadows. To see which places might be too light and which are too dark, we turn the scene completely black and white by just turning the saturation in our gradient effects gadget down. Now we can instantly see that the foreground is just a little too dark and make it a bit lighter. Now we can come to the last step, detail refinement. In this we just want to add and adjust the last little details to make our scene as perfect as we can. I decided to overdraw big parts of the scene to add to the look of a concept art and also make a lot of the parts overgrown to give it more color and detail. Here you can go all in with what you think is missing for your piece. Have a close look at it, what's missing? What could you improve still? What would you make better?
While you should never stop looking on how to improve, it's also important to call an end to it. Too much perfectionism can get in your way and so after about 8 hours or maybe 9 of working on this, I decided that it's now finished. Here's a look at the final artwork. I'm really happy with how it turned out and even more so do I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. A crazy amount of effort was put into this. If you'd like to support me as an artist or just give me a little tip, you can do so on my Patreon, which will also get quite some exclusive content over the next months, including insights to my projects. The link is down below. But I would also highly appreciate it if you just support the video by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with others. Also let me know your feedback in the comments down below, I would love to hear what you think. And with that, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.